Welcome to Press Any Button. I am your host, Eric Litke, along with my wife, Nikki Smith. Hey, that's me. Who is also a host. Yeah, we're, we're co-hosts. Co-hosting. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about Layers of Fear. Bum, we, bum, bum. We played the uh, the Xbox version, but there are several. There's a PC version and a Switch version and stuff. Uh, so, Nikki Smith, I'm calling you by your full name for some reason. Yeah. So, <laughs> I picked this game that we're talking about today, mainly because it's one of the very few games that I've played that Eric has not played. And when you're looking at the catalog of games in your resume, it's very long. <laughs> <laughs> Mine comparatively is pretty short, so it's pretty rare that there's a game that I've actually played and beat, not just played for fun, uh, that you haven't. Yeah, I mean, you did beat it. Yeah. So I stumbled across this game because it was for free with our Xbox Gold subscription. And it looked scary. I love scary stuff. And so I gave it a try and it hooked me. Cool. So what exactly uh, hooked to you about the game? Was it like the story or the gameplay? So in the story, you actually play as this painter and you can tell that something isn't right when you start playing because this house that you're in is spooky. It's so creepy. It's everything's dark as it should be in a horror, uh, not movie, <laughs> in a horror game. You know, you got to have the darkness. <laughs> but um, it, it was just so different. It was unlike any other game that I've played. Um, so basically, you're this artist and you're slowly going mad over the course of the game. And as a player, you're just kind of learning about essentially yourself in the game. You're learning about who you are and who you're playing as, as the game unfolds. Oh, I should just mention real quick, there is a spoiler alert if you are playing, planning on playing this game and you don't want uh, endings or anything like that to be spoiled because we will be talking about all of that. All right, so are you ready to learn about the game, Eric? I am so ready to learn about this game. Awesome. So step one, thing, the first thing you should know is this game came out, came out in 2016. February 16th, 2016. Yeah. So... It's almost five years old now. Wow. Yeah. Um, it was created by the Bluebird team. They are a video game developing company out of Poland. And it was published by a company called Aspire. But they spell it A-S-P-Y-R. So it's Asper or Aspire? I'm just going to assume that they want it to be pronounced Aspire. I don't know. So originally, it was released on Linux, Microsoft Windows, OS X, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. They later came out with a version for the Switch called Legacy, and then a VR version of it called Solitude. And then also with the original game, Layers of Fear, there is um, like, uh, what do you call it, um, extension? That you can buy expansion expansion yeah an or expansion an or an add-on that you can buy called inheritance where you play as the painter's daughter who comes back to her childhood home so in case you didn't get enough of the first the first game you can uh you can buy the ex the add-on to it yeah I, which i can see because the game it doesn't take that long to beat the game i beat it in two sittings uh how long did it take you uh, three sittings. Three sittings. Um, but mostly because, you know, you it's a game you play for an hour or two, and then it's not... Normally, I can sink, like, hours and hours into playing video games, but for whatever reason, I didn't really feel like sinking more than a few hours at a time into this one. For whatever reason? <laughs> hmm, I wonder what that reason could be. It's just funny, because I love horror stuff, and you hate horror stuff. I don't hate horror stuff. I... I and video games, I kind of like it in some ways, but this one, I don't know. It was a little bit too too much for me. I think. I think it was a little bit too. Uh, I thought. I think it was a little too jumpy. Too creepy. Yeah, too jumpy. So 
that's funny because usually I'm the one that can't really sink hours into video games, but actually beat this <laughs> in two sittings, and you had to do it in three. So that's kind of cool. I well, feel. Well, how, what about your original playthrough? How many sittings did that take you? Gosh, I don't know. I, I originally played through this. What well, I mean, probably three years ago. Yeah. I don't think the game was brand new because it was free, but it was a while ago. So I don't even remember how long <laughs> it took me. I do remember though, Pat, even then, it. I remember it not taking me very long, which I thought was cool because I think we had just played Arkham Knight or something like that. And it took us 50, 60 hours to beat it. So yeah, that's... it was a nice... A nice change oh, up man. of just I have never really played a game that was kind of shorter so that's kind of nice yeah so layers of fear was heavily inspired by PT playable teaser a teaser game for a canceled video game a little game you probably never heard of it called Silent Hill yeah uh, that that demo I think got quite a bit of fame just I think a lot of people streamed playing it just uh, to get the reactions because it had a lot of great reactions associated with it. So I can see the influence because I've heard, I haven't actually played PT, but I know you're just kind of walking in circles around a hallway. And this game is very much, yeah, you're walking through hallways. <laughs> a lot of hallways. So the plot for that game, in particular the ending with a blank canvas, closely parallels Anthony M. Rudd's short story, A Square of Black Canvas, from the April 1924 issue of Weird Tales. Huh. So I thought that was cool. So they took a really old story from, which I've heard of Weird Tales before. I think it was kind of just like a publication, kind of like a newspaper, but with weird short stories and stuff like that in it. Yeah. So they took that made it into, I guess, a demo video game for Silent Hills, which sadly got canned. <laughs> yeah. And so um, from what I read, that that demo actually influenced quite a few other games, including Layers of Fear. Um, so Eric, I have a question for you. Yeah. Who or what would you say is the villain in this game? It's It's got to be yourself, right? The, the painter. I mean, it's it's your head. So I feel like the story takes place mostly in the main protagonist or, uh, yeah, the main character's head. So he's got to be his own villain, right? I guess. Maybe I should have said who's the antagonist in the video game. Maybe would that be different, any different for you? Yeah. So I guess it's the house or the yeah. ghost, the ghost well, in the house. I was going to say the house itself. To me, it seems like the house is actually the antagonist of the story. I, I mean, the antagonist could be several. It could be like his addiction. It could be like, you know, more metaphorical. Uh, but I feel like because so much, well, it's hard to tell, say what, uh, if it takes place in his head or if it's hap really happening. So I don't know. I, I just assumed it was all in his head. Oh, I assumed it was really happening. Oh. Some stuff I assumed would be in his head, but I guess I was thinking if it's a really haunted house, then why couldn't it just shift around? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a very big house. There are a lot of hallways and rooms, and a lot of them, you know, you just, you know, are going to be locked, uh, locked doors. Like, how, how many rooms and hallways does this house have? Yeah. So I found a really good article with one of the Bloober team employees. His name is Raffle Bazaar. Okay. I hope I didn't butcher the name <laughs> I'm too sure bad. <laughs> but it was a really cool article. Uh, and in that, he says, The haunted house setting is one of the most well-known horror troops, and it does wonders for layer layers of fear. We believe that true horror comes from the unknown. The environment plays a vital role in creating a thick and uneasy mood. Real-time changes to your surroundings create this feeling of not knowing what will come next. People expect that crazy things will happen and that they will escalate quickly. 
That's pretty fair. Yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> I got to a point where it was like every single room I went into, I'm like, uh, what's going to happen in this one? <laughs> like, what's going to be the trigger to set off the nonsense that's going to go on? Exactly. And like any good horror story, it starts off slow. At first, you're like, okay, this is like a normal house, la, 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 la. <laughs> and then the first time you walk in a room and back out and it's changed, you're like, what the fuck? This wasn't a hallway before. This was the kitchen. <laughs> Even when you're in a room, things will change. So it's not just going in a room and then coming back out to something different. Sometimes you're in a room and just turning around there's something different. If you go look at a painting sometimes and then you turn around to see the rest of the room again, that's changed as well. So you really don't know when the house is going to flip up on you. Yeah, that's a really cool effect. Um, I I'd remember I remember seeing it in um, one of the Batman games and some of those cutscenes. It would happen. I always thought it was really just amazing. And it makes it extra creepy because... At first, you're not really expecting that. You're expecting just the room, just the things to change when you go into another room. But then the first time it happens in the room, it's really creepy. Yeah, for sure. So another cool thing about uh, this game, Eric, is that all the paintings in the haunted house are actually real works of art. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Yeah. So many of the pictures are from well-known well -known artists such as Francisco Goyas. He painted the Saturn devouring his son painting. Oh, yeah. I remember that one. That's, and, that's a creepy Yeah. Thing. And Rembrandt's The Rape of Ganymede. I don't know if I'm saying that right. <laughs> yeah. I'll... It's G-A-N-Y-M-E-D-E. -E. Ganymede. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's fine. Anyways, some of the pictures are even cropped versions of bigger paintings like the picture of the puppy dog in the child's room mm -hmm. that's actually just a square from a much bigger portrait of a man that's cool what about like the main uh the main paintings that the it's focused on like the creepy you know you know wife paintings and stuff like that were those done specifically for the game or are they works of art somewhere else too I think those were made for the game, but all the works of art that are actually hanging up in the house are are real. Okay, so just not the main focused ones. I don't think so. I, di I didn't see that when I was looking it up. Okay. But the the picture of the wife doesn't look, really look familiar to me. So d did you recognize it? No, I okay. didn't. I didn't recognize like any of them. I think the Saturn devouring his son was the one one I did recognize, but. Yeah, that's that's a really creepy one. Yeah, I did. I recognized a few of them, but I couldn't have told you the titles of them or anything. There are actually thirty-eight paintings total in the house, and the the creepiest one to me, I don't know about you, is the painting in the office of the baby. Yeah, baby face or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that painting is actually a portrait of Tognina. Gons Alvas. But okay. yeah, I'm just butchering every name I say. That's in this podcast. So 100% perfect. Hopefully that's right. <laughs> it's from 1583 and it's by Lavina Fontana. It's a painting. Yeah, it's the one that's a small child that has, it has the hairy face, but you know that actually has a name, right? That no. condition. No. It is hopper trichosis and it's also known as werewolf syndrome huh. but apparently back in that day they didn't consider that person a human like any mm. person that had this disease they didn't treat they didn't consider them a human so they didn't document their death or anything like that so there's very actually little known about the baby that's in the or the child that's in the portrait but it's kind of shitty just a little tidbit yeah what what painting did you think was the creepiest uh that one was super creepy <laughs> um there were just a lot of them in general <laughs> all of them yeah the they were is, they're all creepy. the right answer is all of them <laughs> yeah so pretty much that's what i was able to find out about the game cool yeah that's um, interesting stuff yeah little tidbits i like learning little tidbits and little information facts about 
games that you didn't know before. So that's cool. Uh, so you enjoyed this game, did you? I did enjoy this game. I would recommend this game 10 out of 10. Wow. Anyone, that's a, anyone should play it, especially if you like scary stuff. That's a very high score, 10 out of 10. It's yeah. like, that's like a perfect game. 10 out of 10. Other people may disagree with me, but <laughs> for me, it was a pretty perfect game. That's good. No, I, I really can't complain. So some of the some of the things I liked about the game, I like that it's unique. I've never really played a game like this where the environment shifts around. That is usually a pretty standard thing that you're used to in gaming is that yeah. the environment and the rooms and the place that you're walking around is going to stay the same. Every game I've played ever before, even scary movie, like even scary games, you know, that hasn't happened before. So I think it's unique in that aspect. I think it's unique that you're playing kind of as the only character in the game, basically. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's just you and the house. Yeah. Um, and the ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, for me, I thought the game was a little too jumpy, a little too jump scary. The best parts of the game were to me like the surreal moments where, you know, you'd have the floating furniture or, you know, like, um, or the rooms, the walls starts to like kind of, yeah, lay, I, like, I felt lady. like those were to me the, like the coolest aspects. I would have liked to have seen more of that kind of stuff. Um, but then you get, got into like the jump scare stuff and I just like, okay, uh, I'm, and I'm expecting something to happen. I feel like if, uh, if they had, let you explore a little bit more or uh, let you get kind of accustomed to something, maybe a little bit more uh, puzzle solving or something that would have helped a lot. I actually didn't think there was that many jump scares <laughs> and that could just be, you know, where our difference comes in where I've watched a lot more horror movies and stuff than you. So I don't get scared as easily, Yeah. but I thought, you know, I thought there actually could have been more jump scares. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's cool. So, that... so it's either too many or not enough, depending on right. who you are. Yeah. I think it's cool that you don't have a weapon. There's no fighting. There's no combat or anything like that in this game, which yeah. I think is another thing that makes it unique because I've never played a video game where you're not like trying to take down an enemy with like a gun or something yeah. <laughs> or fireballs or whatever. You're kind of the... Uh kind of an immortal who doesn't have to worry about dying yeah i also like that it's short not i don't think all games just like all books don't need to be 50 chapters long this one's a nice short sweet game what would you say about six hours maybe yeah play time i'd say about six hours um if you're speed running it you can do it in about 30 minutes <laughs> <laughs> yeah if you're if you're good and i think also since it is kind of short I think there's a lot of replayability with this game. I oh, played really? it again, and I maybe it's because I went like three years in between, but I thought it was still really fun. I didn't exactly remember every little thing, so I still found it scary. Yeah. I don't, to me personally, I don't see a ton of replayability in this game. You know, the story is the story. There's not a whole lot of exploration. Uh, it's just like... You can find a few pictures and uh, additional story elements as you're kind of digging around through the drawers and stuff. Well, you know, there's actually three different endings that you can get for the game, right? Yeah, I, so I did learn that later. I think that that gives it replayability That's because true. you yeah, can not, try to go in with objective to unlock the two other endings. I'm not saying it's not replayable at all. I'm just saying, I don't know. It's, it's fine. It's good. I really liked how the uh, game told its story. It used a lot of symbolism. You know, it didn't directly tell you what was going on. It kind of hid clues around the house and you kind of had to figure out the story a bit of, uh, for yourself. And I kind of like that aspect. That's actually one of the things that I would have listed as a con. <laughs> oh, really? I felt the story, there was a few things where I guess they want you to fill in the blanks yourself, but in my mind, I'm like, oh gosh, what if I'm thinking in it, thinking it's this and it's really not this, you know, I would, would almost rather be kind of like told this is exactly what the story is instead of trying to have to almost figure it out on my own in a way. So I thought maybe the story could have been done a little more clearly because I still wasn't sure if like he murdered his wife 
if his kid was had been murdered. Well, you, then you got the replayability because you're tr you're trying to find out. You're That's trying to true. you're trying to find those clues that might tell you what exactly happened. Yeah, and like I thought the kid had died, but then you know there's the add-on game where you play as the daughter. So I guess the daughter did die. <laughs> yeah, I guess she's I was fine. like, what? Okay, well I was wrong on that one. <laughs> I also thought that there could be more gore. <laughs> Personally. <laughs> I love gory stuff. I love Mortal Kombat. I love blood and guts and yeah. all that stuff. And there really isn't a lot of that in this game. I thought the game was fine with the level of core that was in there already. That was not a kind for me. You know, the game was really scary. You're talking about one of your pros. I thought it was, I actually had it listed as a con because, you know, the character you were playing was never really in any danger. So even though you had those jump parts, you never like was, were inherently needed to feel like you needed to run away or anything like that. You could just like walk straight towards the scary thing. And the only thing that was going to happen was, you know, it would skill, scare you personally and your character would be fine. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> also, I wish I had a flashlight in the game. <laughs> yeah, me too. It Sometimes... was too dark. Sometimes, yeah, it was so dark. At one point, I had to go in and boost the brightness up on the screen because I literally could not find my way out. Yeah, I had to do that. Like, I, like right at the beginning of the game, I got stuck in the basement, and I couldn't figure out how to get back to the basement door without adjusting the brightness to, so I could actually see a little bit. I think that's a part of the game, though, too, because you get that sense of panic a little bit. Yeah. You're like, oh, crap. How do I get out of here? I want to be stuck. I'm going to be stuck in here forever. And that plays on another level of fear. Yeah, true. It's it's actually, I understand why they did it because they wanted you to focus on the light, lighter elements and for that to kind of like guide you. So you didn't like uh, want to go into the dark too much because you had, you know, you didn't have anything to help you see anything. So there wasn't a lot of point, but it was a kind of a storytelling element, which I appreciate. Something I didn't like is the parts where you had to find the little tiny objects. The checker pieces? Uh, it wasn't just that. It would be find this tiny object in the room to set the trigger or, you know, do this one weird thing. Like uh, in the office, I, I walked around like, I swear, like 20 minutes trying to figure out what trigger the next thing until I finally looked at the ceiling and like, oh, just looking at the ceiling causes the trigger. Yeah. So so you're going through a room trying to figure out what triggers it. The ceiling thing was actually pretty cool when, once you figured it out. Mm -hmm. But but when it was just like find the little tiny object, like, I don't know. Uh, I would have liked like a more variety of, of puzzles, I think. I think that the game could have benefited from that. Like the few puzzles that were in there, I thought were really well done. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, there could be could have been more puzzles. I think so too, and and maybe they did that in Layers of Fear too. I don't know, but sure, yeah, um, yeah. we'll have to go see. <laughs> we'll have to check it out. So a fun a fun fact: I have a friend who's a video game developer, and in school, one of the first things that they talked about is that getting people to look up in a video game is one of the hardest things to do. Yeah. And so I can see that it took you that long to look up because no one thinks to look at the ceiling. Yeah. You know, I, you're walking around this room trying to figure out what the trigger is. And that, so it doesn't really occur to you that like, oh, just, you know, look up and there it is. Yeah. So pro, pro gamer tip. Just look up. Always look up at the ceiling. <laughs> Always check the ceiling out, you know, <laughs> give those environmental artists some credit for just for doing that like popcorn ceiling yeah, texture. Ceiling, ceiling designers need, uh, you know, respect. All right. So strategy, did you use any strategy to help you get through this game? Like crossing your fingers or closing your eyes at parts? <laughs> no, I would never do that. What's the point? What's the point of playing a scary game if you're going to close your eyes? Also, did you know there's a run button? No, <laughs> there I a... did not. I learned this afterwards. And man, I could have beat the game so much faster if I knew. Well, you don't run that much fast. It's like there's it's your walking pace and slightly faster than okay. walking pace. Cause like, it's not really run, but you yeah. have a limp. 
your character has a limp, so I would imagine you can't oh, run that fast. Okay, so you didn't notice. So fast limp or slow limp, and you yeah. didn't notice he had a limp. No. <laughs> yeah, he definitely has a limp. <laughs> But yeah, I even though the run button was there, it's one of the only games I played where I did not constantly try to like go for the run button. Yeah, unless you're speed running this game, I don't really know why you just try to run through the house because half the fun is exploring the house. Yeah, and looking and, at all and the you're creepy worried stuff. That you're gonna trigger the next thing, so it's like you're trying to be a little bit cautious, especially your first playthrough. Yeah, I'm not really sure what kind of strategy you could have in this game is walking around exploring the house as much as possible strategy yeah normally that, that was basically my strategy that's normally what i'm all about but i didn't really feel like doing it as much in this game for some reason <laughs> for some reason again I don't know why. Mm. <laughs> basically yeah that was my strategy just walking around trying to explore the house as much as i could the second time i played it i was trying to see if i could play it kind of fast yeah. Uh, not technically speed run, but kind of. So quick question. Did you ever have to look anything up for this game? Like, did you have to go to the internet and be like, you know, I don't know how to get past this part. What's the thing? What's the, what's the code or what's the, where do I look for it or whatever? No, I was pretty much able to figure it all out. Um, there were a couple of things that I found challenging. I fell a couple of times in the office library yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when I was trying <laughs> to do that. Uh, it took me a while to trigger the phone, the last phone for some reason. Yeah. So I fell a couple of times trying to do that. And then the one room where you have the, I think it's cat, dog, rat um, kind of maze puzzle that you have to figure out the code for the lock for. Yeah. I found those squiggle things hard to follow. Yeah, they were I had super to literally hard. get up and f put my finger <laughs> on the TV screen so that I didn't lose it just because the way some of the lines intersected, I kept getting them mixed and then I would just end up right back where the word was. Yeah. And I'm like, it took me a couple of times, but I didn't have to look anything up. I think, I think a kid could play this. Like maybe like, <laughs> don't you think like maybe a 10, yeah. 12 year old kid, like maybe not. Because it's scary, not a little kid, but it's not that scary nah, e it's, either. It's so I would bad. let my nephew play this game. It's not game. too bad for you. It was scary for me. <laughs> no. it, it was fine. I, I would let my nephew play this game. I think he would. You would love it. Yeah. You know, he would like it. He's in that phase <laughs> where he likes all the scary things. So, so how much would you pay for this game? Like we got it for free, obviously. Not everyone gets to get it for free. If, if you were just off the street, what would you value this game at? I think I would pay 15, 10, 15 bucks for this game. Yeah, I'd say. Just because of how long it is, I definitely don't think it would be worth $50 or anything like that. If I bought it for $50 and I got done playing it in two sittings, I'd be pretty upset. Yeah, I'd say my mine was around 10, 10 or 15 bucks. Yeah, and then you well. have the add-on which we just bought and it was five bucks. So I feel like that's pretty fair, pretty yeah. fair price. Yeah, I feel that's pretty good. So do you kind of want to know what the, the three endings are? I looked it up. <laughs> I kind of do. Uh, so I got the... Because I don't really expect you to play this game again. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to play this game again. It's great. Uh, so the first ending, or the uh, the ending that we both got was the uh, the endless ending, right? Yeah, the loop ending. So, you know, you finish the painting, you throw it in the room with all the other you, paintings. Yeah, you finish the painting, it's your beautiful wife, and then it slowly morphs into this really gross like fleshy seal looking thing yeah right it it's is... a weird creepy monster kind of yeah hairless and he's like thing. oh no i messed it up time to try again and he like throws it in the room with a bunch of others and then he's like back to the thing and you start all the way over and so... then all the paintings in the room start laughing at you yeah yeah that's so cool. Yeah, that's a creepy ending because then you're like, oh man, this guy, this is his, this is his Groundhog's Day. He's just trying to get this painting done, but he's insane. So he's doing the same thing and getting the same result over and over again, expecting a different result. <laughs> yeah. The second alternative ending is the self-portrait ending. So instead of the wife's picture 
it's a picture of him, which I think would be cool. I'm kind of curious what he looks like. <laughs> so what do you have to do to trigger the other innings? So for the self-portrait ending, like I said, instead of your wife, it's you, and you hang the painting in an art gallery, which suggests that you finally overcome your obsession with the painting. And I think that's kind of probably like the happiest ending you could have. Oh, okay. To get that, you don't approach the painter's wife and you don't push the wheelchair in the hallway. So you oh. have to go through and I guess just not do those two things and you can trigger that ending. And then the third alternate ending is a family ending where you, the artist, you add your daughter to the painting too. And then you realize all the horrible mistakes you've made and that you can't undo them. So you light the paintings on fire and you sit next to them and basically burn. Huh. That sounds like a happy one. Super creepy, right? Yeah. yeah. To get that ending, you always go to the painter's wife you pick up family mementos i guess you have to pick up all the family mementos and you push the wheelchair dang so i guess why we didn't trigger that one is that we just didn't find all the family mementos because i pushed the wheelchair i did not push the wheelchair you didn't push the wheelchair yeah oh i did because I, <laughs> so, I thought it would trigger something <laughs> so we got the uh default endings basically and we, we missed we both missed the special ones yeah so i want to go back and replay and see if I can get the other endings. I it didn't even occur to me not to approach the painter's wife. <laughs> yeah, neither. Or my wife. I, I was just like, thought, yeah, I let's just, go check this creepy chick out. I just thought you had to. It's like, oh, she's just gonna stand over there until you approach her, I guess. Exactly. So I I would recommend this game. If you're if you're a horror movie, horror genre lover and you want just a quick a quick scare, a quick game to play in a few sittings. I would recommend this for sure. So are you going to buy Layers of Fear 2? I would like to buy it eventually after I play um, Inheritance, which I already bought. I'm going to play that next. And then probably take a break, play some other games in between. But I would like to come back and play Layers of Fear 2. Okay. Yeah, apparently we're behind on the series. Uh, Layers of Fear 2 was released uh, May 28th, 2019. Uh, the player controls a Hollywood actor who heeds the call of an enigma enigmatic director to take on the lead role in a, a short uh, film abroad in an ocean liner. Beware, for all may not truly be what it seems. Does that, like, draw you in? So you're on an ocean liner, basically. Yeah, you're like an actor. On an ocean liner. It sounds really different. I wonder how they're going to make it as psychologically scary, you know? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe the ocean liner has a bunch of rooms in it and hallways. And the hallways and rooms shift. <laughs> <laughs> so this year in April 2020, I guess it'll be last year when you guys hear it. It was announced by the Bloober team that they signed a contract with Project Nerd Boss. That will include an adaptation of Layers of Fear. No other details have been provided yet. That's the only thing I could find. So we don't know who would be in the cast or who would, you know, when it would come out or anything so like that. So they're going to make a movie. They're going to make a Layers of Fear They are supposed to, be, okay. supposed to be making a movie. Who, who would you cast as the artist if you were just going to cast any actor? <laughs> Jim Carrey. That is a good, actually a pretty good pick. I was going to say Johnny Depp. He always oh. plays those, you know, artsy, disturbed, kind of weird characters. Yeah. But Jim Carrey <laughs> would was, be good, too. I, Have you seen 23? He gets no. really dark in that movie. No, so I, he, was, I was half joking. I forget he actually does some pretty decent stuff. Yeah, he stuff. actually does have some pretty good, like, serious, dark stuff. As far as Layers of Fear go, is there anything else new or upcoming that you found that you want to share? Yeah, I didn't see anything else. I think we covered it all. Yeah. The only other thing I have is the Bloober team. They have a new horror movie. Or, I keep saying movie. <laughs> they have a new horror game coming out next year called The Medium, hmm. which sounds really cool. You play as a psychic, and you can go back and forth between the real world and the spirit world. Wow. Yeah. I feel so, like I would just cool. want to avoid the spirit world. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds really creative. So that comes out January 28th, 2021. Um, and they're actually, for that one, they're going to skip 
putting it out for Xbox One and it's only going to be on Xbox X. So until we get the next console, we're out of luck. Oh no. Yeah, oh no. In the distant future, maybe. So Eric, it's come to the challenge part of the podcast and I have to know. Did you beat the game? Yes, I did beat this game. I did not chicken out. It's Darn it. I don't get to hear you rap yet. I'm not sure what else you could have made a, a challenge for this other than one of the weird alternative endings, but yeah, this is this is, was a pretty I wouldn't say easy challenge. Yeah, it was pretty easy. Just it's a short game, you know. True. 6 hours. That's why I gave it. Uh, uh on a longer game, I would not have given you the challenge of finishing the game because yeah. that would be pretty impossible. But I thought for this one, that was a pretty fair challenge. Yeah, I thought it was fine. Speaking of challenges, are you ready to hear the next game? The game that I have to play that you're going to give me a challenge for? That's right. The game that you picked out and I have no I idea what it is? Handpicked myself oh, and that no. you have no idea what it is. I'm so scared. I'm so scared you're going to give me something hard like Mega Man. No, it's Ugh. not going to be hard. Okay. Uh, well, it might. I don't know. I don't know if this game will be hard for you or not. <laughs> okay. So what the game, is it? The next game is Undertale. I have <laughs> no idea what that game is. That's good. I'm really excited about this game. I, I love Isn't this game so Isn't that Sonic's much. friend? <laughs> no, it's not Tails. It's, the game is Undertale. It's a, it's so it has a, nothing to do with Sonic's friend Tails? Uh, have you ever played a classic turn-based RPG? Uh, no. I'm going to say no. No. Okay. Well, this is a kind of based on that classic model RPG. So this is going to be fun. I have no idea if you'll like this game or not. This is going to be totally different. <laughs> From any game I've played before, it sounds like. Yeah. It is a uh, it is a pretty short RPG. Do we have this game? Yes, we okay. already have the game. So the challenge for the week, this is going to be a really difficult challenge for this game. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I'm so scared. Like, you, you beat my first challenge I gave you, like, easy. So you didn't have to do anything. But I'm scared that I'm not going to meet the challenge. I'm going to have to do whatever it is, is gonna, you assigned to me. <laughs> this is going to be very difficult. Okay. Okay, all you have to do is sell an item. Okay. Is this like a trick challenge? No, what? Can you can you even sell items in this game? Yes. You're not tricking me? Like, ha, I, ha, 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 this will be funny. <laughs> um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens when you try to okay, sell an so item. Okay, so just sell any item. Sell any to item. To any character. Yep. Okay. That's it. And what do I have to do if I don't? It's the wrap. It's you have to do a thirty measure wrap. A thir thirty measure. Thirty second wrap. Oh gosh, freestyle or write it. It's either one, either way, whatever you want to do. Okay. All, All right. right. I think that's our episode. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. If you like the podcast and you want to join us in a discussion, follow us on Instagram or Facebook at Press Any Button Podcast. Also, leave us a review and share with your friends.